Have you ever wondered how economic principles intersect with religious beliefs? Delving into the fascinating world of Sharia microeconomics might just answer that question for you. Sharia law, which forms the foundation of Islamic finance, has a unique take on microeconomics, the study of individual units within an economy. So, grab a cup of coffee and settle in as we explore this intriguing blend of faith and finance. First off, let's understand what microeconomics is. It's the branch of economics that focuses on how individuals, households, and firms make decisions to allocate limited resources. Now imagine applying religious principles to this. That's Sharia microeconomics for you. At the heart of Sharia microeconomics is the prohibition of riba, or interest. In conventional economics, interest forms the backbone of many transactions. But in Sharia law, charging interest is considered exploitative and unfair, leading to an unjust distribution of wealth. Instead, Sharia promotes risk sharing through partnerships and joint ventures. Imagine two business partners. When they make a profit, they share it. If they make a loss, they bear it together. This principle of mutual risk and reward is a fundamental pillar of Sharia microeconomics. Another key principle is the prohibition of garar, or uncertainty. In simple terms, Sharia law frowns upon transactions that involve excessive risk or ambiguity. This means speculative trading and gambling are off the table. Then there's the concept of halal, which means permissible, and haram, which means forbidden. In the economic context, halal refers to activities that are ethical, sustainable, and beneficial to society, while haram refers to activities that are harmful or unethical. To sum up, Sharia microeconomics revolves around the principles of no interest, shared risk, no excessive uncertainty, and a clear distinction between ethical and unethical economic activities. This approach challenges conventional economic theories and offers an alternative perspective on wealth creation and distribution. It promotes fairness, mutual benefit, and social responsibility, making it a compelling model for sustainable economic development. As we wrap up, remember, Sharia microeconomics is not just about finance or religion. It's about a just and equitable economic system that strives to benefit all participants. It's a fascinating blend of faith and finance, offering insights that could reshape our understanding of economics. So the next time you think about economics, remember to consider the principles of Sharia microeconomics. It's a different lens through which to view the world of finance, one that could lead to a more equitable and sustainable economic future.